and gentlemen on a long time. It is indeed a delightful moment for us as we gather here for a two-day conference on clean coal and carbon capture and storage technology organized under Texas and Bharat Heavy Electrical Limited Fifties Partnership Project Cycle, developing a cluster for clean coal technologies and carbon capture and storage technology for the Indian thermal power sector funded by, funded by the European Union. We shall now begin with the invocation amid Thai
for technology development and innovation in the coal area, especially with the international agencies and in countries such as in Asia, Africa, etc. Welcome you to this conference, ma'am. A special welcome to Dr. John Topper, CEO, International Energy Agency Coal Research Limited, for his valuable inputs and great support to us throughout the project and for making this conference very meaningful with his inputs along with other colleagues from IEA. Welcome, Dr. Our heartiest welcome to Mr. R.F.P. Jawahar, Executive Director, Trekstep. Sir, your contributions to this groundbreaking project from conceptualization through implementation to the final impact stage has been truly phenomenal. It was your vision that drove the project and that the concluding stages of this project should be marked with an event of international impact and long-lasting importance in CCT and CCS domain. This conference is indeed a fructification of your ideas, sir. A happy welcome to you. A very warm welcome to the officials of DHEL who, sh who are our project partners and closely involved in organizing this conference. My heartiest welcome to Mr. Muthu Krishnan, General Manager, R&D, and Cold Research, and the entire Cold Research team who have enthusiastically lent support for this event and also during various phases of the project. I welcome the distinguished speakers of the conference who have traveled great distances to be here with us to share their experiences and perspectives on this very important initiative. I extend a warm welcome to all the delegates and various stakeholders from academia, past sector industries, entrepreneurial communities, pretty industrial associations who are keen participants of this event. My welcome address would indeed be incomplete if I do not extend a warm welcome to members of the print and electronic media who are here today to immensely support this initiative with their coverage. I heartily welcome my fellow colleagues, Ms. Bindu and her team, and the other faculty members who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure the event is a great, grand success. I'm sure this historic CCTCCS conference in Trichy will offer a rewarding and enriching experience to all of us. Once again, a hearty welcome to you all. May I now request our Executive Director to honor the distinguished guests with mementos and garlands. So I request you to kindly do the honors for Dr. Mandel Wang. Good morning, everyone. Respected Chief Guest of today's function, Executive Director, VHL Trichy, Mr. Eri Krishnan, Dr. Marianne White, Policy Officer, European Commission, DG for Energy from Brussels, Dr. John Topper, CEO, IEA Cold Research Limited and Environmental Project Limited, uh, and few friends from uh, VHL and other Tamil power sectors, uh, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen. To be very true, I am really delighted and honored to stand before this very important gathering and uh, deliver what uh, my organizers have said as a project briefing address. I am wondering what this project briefing address uh, means. Maybe I will come by what 
First of all, let me uh, tell you this uh, conference, this conference on green coal uh, technologies and carbon capture and storage technologies is not a standalone event. It is part of a broader project, a part of a, a three-year project on green coal technologies, uh, which is funded by European Union, Trexter and BHL in a series of activities. And the series of activities includes uh, capacity development programs. We have uh, trained nearly 250 uh, thermal power plant engineers in our uh, latest areas of uh, CCT and CCS. Uh, we have organized a number of uh, study visits to European Union uh, power plants and centers of excellence in CCT and CCS. Uh, we have conducted these studies uh, and also we have uh, uh, taken up two major development projects, uh, Team BHA with BHA. And we have incubated six to seven majors. In fact, I'll be describing uh, more about this project and what the different phases of the project, what we have achieved, and what we are trying to achieve uh, in a uh, session, separate session. But uh, at the outset, uh, why this project? Uh, that was a question uh, I think uh, we should uh, visit again. Uh, because, uh, as you all know, even today in the Hindu, the center page, Climate change is an issue which is getting a uh, huge. Related to coal use in former Soviet countries and several in China, with British Coal Corporation's research establishment, and also as in the as the in charge of British Coal R&D plant. May we kindly request you, sir, to deliver the special message. Mr. Krishnan, Mr. Yamaha, it's a great pleasure to be here with Trisha again. I was here 15 months ago, so I was reminded, um, talking to a similar audience, and I'm glad to see that uh, it's actually grown in size. Um, I should say before I start talking about the problems that we're going to be discussing in the next couple of days, that um, you've heard references to the IA Clean Coal Centre and the IA Greenhouse Gas Programme, and most of you won't know what the hell those are. Uh, there are uh, what we call implementary agreements, international clubs, if you like, mandated by the International Energy Agency. Um, BHEL has been a valued member of the IEA Clean Coal Center since uh, I've been associated with it since 1999. India is a member of the IEA Greenhouse Gas Program. So we do feel kind of obligated to come and talk when we get the opportunity in a meeting like this. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, <laughs> and trying to put where I think India fits into that global perspective as a sort of context setting exercise. Um, first thing for the journalists, 41% or maybe 42% depending on whose data you look at, 41, 42% of the world's power is generated from coal. By far the biggest source of, of, of electricity. Um, it's interesting that despite all of the uh, stuff that we see about trying to move towards renewables, um, nuclear, etc., etc. Um, in the last 10 years, um, additional energy demand uh, from coal or equals almost, anyway, uh, the total from renewables, oil and gas combined. So those have all expanded, but coal has expanded in its use as much as uh, all of those put together, very nearly. The IA believes, based on its um, central scenario that it uses, that in the next 20 years, fossil energy um, will give 60% of additional energy demand, and coal will increase significantly within that. Most of that additional coal is going to be uh, needed in uh, China, India, and Southeast Asia. Those are the driving forces for moving for the, the addition, that additional demand. India, as I'm sure most of you already know, is already number two in terms of its coal use in total tonnage. Um, and it's not too many years into the future before we think India will become the number one importer of coal for power. 
uh, would surpass China, in fact, in terms of imports. But there are other issues associated with the use of coal for power, which perhaps don't get quite as much publicity worldwide. Um, 1.3 billion people in the world are not connected to power. I believe 300 million of those are here in India. Uh, coal will be used as a relatively cheap and plentiful um, source of electric power. Uh, but of course, all of that coal use has consequences for environment and long term for the climate, which is why we're here for this conference. And if you are a net importer, uh, like India, then there are also other issues associated with using more and more coal from different sources. I think uh, if you haven't hit the pit problems already, it's going to become apparent that just blending coals is quite an issue. Um, there's sliding barrel problems and all sorts of operational issues. Um, but um, in spite of that, I think what this conference is going to try and uh, put across or what is best practice today on a global basis in terms of, uh, of optimizing operational parameters and power stations, going for maximum economic efficiency, reducing emissions of SOPs, NOPs, and particulates. There are all those going to be priorities, and you all know that, and you all, you all know that that's going to be, uh, sorry, enshrined in, in recent law in, uh, in India, as it is in China increasingly and in some other um, Asian countries. But uh, not yet enshrined in law or in policy objectives, probably a better way of putting it, are uh, the objectives to get carbon capture and storage up and running. Um, we're seeing a more faltering start in trying to get that technology moving. You'll hear a lot more about that in the next couple of days. What you will hear is a lot of good, good, really good technical development has been taking place. But we are struggling to get that technology commercialized and spread out around the world. Um, the IEA itself in Paris um, roadmaps all of these different technologies um, try and predicates trying to keep global temperature right to 2 degrees centigrade by 2050. This is an objective which is rapidly um, becoming more and more difficult to obtain. Um, compensating actions are urgently required if that's to be maintained as the sort of target. At the moment we're on track for what we believe for the models to be three and a half degrees C temperature rise, which will have significant consequences of all sorts. <coughs> IA's analysis suggests that the um, that after energy efficiency in all its forms, then CCS is the next biggest potential contributor to achieving this uh, lower 2 degrees C target. I want to make a point here that CCS is not just necessary for coal-fired power. Everybody thinks of it in those terms because that's where you tend to start. <coughs> Excuse me. But ultimately, we also will be expecting to see CCS on gas-fired power stations and apply to large-scale industrial users such as cement, iron, steel, and the refineries. And if the world is going to achieve the sort of uh, objective we're talking about in terms of limited temperature rise, a lot of that burden is going to fall on Asian economies because they're much expanding fast. <coughs> IEA's uh, international uh, implementing agreements are supporting this event, and we're hoping that it can do extremely well in the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Marine Boy, Policy Officer, European Commission Directory General for Energy Sustain. Dr. Boy started acting as the European Commission from 2008 as second national expert from the German state Brandenburg. She has been actively involved in the development of all major initiatives taken in the core policy domain, more specifically in the field of EU relations with third countries including international organizations in the implementation of EU strategies for technology development and innovation in the whole area. Before her secondment, Dr. White has been working for more than 15 years as senior government official in the German Ministry of Economy, where she was involved in the decision making of the mining and coal sector. May we kindly request you ma'am to deliver the special address. Dear Mr. Krishna, dear Mr. Yamaha, 
Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to inaugurate the, the conference on clean coal and CCS technologies and to open this event on behalf of the European Union. The conference is gathering representatives from the Indian transformer sector, government, institutions, experts, entrepreneurs, innovators, and scientists engaged in clean coal technologies and carbon capture and storage. I thank the Flagstaff College and the BHER for hosting this conference and this important industrial and energy center of fishing in the state of Tamil Nadu. In February 2012, uh, in the March of the European Union India Summit, leaders adopted a joint declaration on energy cooperation. Uh, the declaration renews the firm commitment of both sides to enhance cooperation in the energy field and identified as one of the priorities areas for mutually beneficial joint activity, the development and deployment of advanced coal mining and clean coal technologies. A meeting national uh, electricity demand by using domestic energy sources like coal is one of India's greatest energy challenges. 60% of the energy is generated through thermal plants in India, of which 85% is generated through coal. Therefore, collaboration and raising awareness in the field of clean coal uh, can have a considerable impact. Reducing the environmental and climate change impact of coal-fired power generation is very important. I attended two weeks ago the International Coal and Climate Summit, uh, a side event of the Climate Change Copenhagen 19 Summit in Warsaw. The so-called Warsaw Communique uh, for high efficient low emission coal-fired power generation was launched at this summit. It shows the great potential of clean coal technologies to reduce the impact on climate change and environment and calls <coughs> for action and signing up to this communique. The European Union is very engaged in this field and has bilateral clean coal working groups with coal using countries. Since 2008, the EU um, India and Clean Coal Working Group uh, with the Ministry of Power uh, is very active uh, with many projects. Um, the EU or Indo EU Coal Working Group with the Ministry of Coal had the eighth meeting last Thursday in Chennai. The discussion, the, the discussion on uh, advanced coal mining technologies um, were continued in the Nivellic Night Corporation during the visit of their mines and power plants on Friday. Uh, two European uh, Union funded projects support the promotion of clean coal technologies and carbon capture storage in India for a combined contribution of 1 million euro uh, with what is 8, eight cores. Uh, one of the projects is uh, uh, the Flexstep project uh, to develop a cluster for clean coal technologies and CCS, which high confidence we have today. Expanding energy supply to provide universal access to energy and maintain economic growth must be a top priority. The European Union shares some, sort, some of India's challenges in this field. Since its reform in 1991, India has, has experienced an impressive economic growth, improving standards of living and reducing considerably poverty, especially in coal regions like in Tamil Nadu. Coal plays an important role to secure energy supply from domestic sources. However, to maintain its growth and to secure a sustainable energy supply the low emission, it needs to increase the efficiency of coal production and coal combustion, combustion as well of electricity transmission and electricity energy consumption. You will hear in my presentation that the further deployment of coal in Europe requires high efficient mining and power plant technologies and further efforts to develop technologies through research. 
our analysis in the European Union uh, towards 2050 and uh, towards 2030 shows that coal and gas, natural gas, will remain in the Europe energy mix for some time. At the same time, Europe is committed to decarbonization. The carbon capture and storage is crucial if you want to continue to use fossil fuels in Europe. Over the last centuries and decades, the European Union has gathered experiences on the development and deployment of technologies to improve the efficiency and to reduce emissions. As a consequence of the environmental and climate change policy and regulation, European technology has a world-leading position. I am happy to welcome the experts from Europe in this conference. And it is very important to promote exchange on best practices, knowledge, and skills among Europe and India to facilitate partnerships and networks. I welcome the new uh, developed cluster for simple technology in CCS for the Indian thermal power sector and invite all the thermal power players to come on board. I am confident and that this can make a great contribution to improve the awareness and the success of clean coal and CCS in India. On the EU's behalf, I can only but dare from our commitment to work along your side and our willingness to jointly engage towards an efficient and sustainable low emission coal and energy sector. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Director. Power and KV Electrical Limited Energy. Sri KV Krishnan has peer-headed the quality moments at BHL and contributed immensely in making BHL to achieve in many quality awards, accolades and recognitions continuously. Prior to this, he headed BHL Ranitec, where he steered the boiler auxiliary plant to new arrive by introducing various new initiatives. Earlier, for over two decades, Sri A.V. Krishnan has immensely contributed in several areas at BHL such as engineering, R&D, quality, and budget research in student research. May we kindly request you, sir, to deliver the inaugural message. Thank you, Bindu, for the introduction. Dr. Melian Wei, Policy Officer, European Commission Director General for Energy from Belgium. Dr. John Topper, CEO, IEA UK. Sri RMP Jawahar, CEO of Trekstep. Mrs. Gita Chindapa. Dr. V. Gopal Krishi, former executive director of BHL Trichy. All the delegates, invitees, speakers from India and abroad, ladies and gentlemen. A very good morning to all of you. I am really pleased to be part of this conference on clean coal technology and carbon capture and storage technologies. This is the second such program being organized in the last one year. And the main reason being that day by day the climate change is becoming more and more important issue in our lives. And this is the time we need to realize the enormous amount of stress that is being exerted on the earth by emitting the man-made pollutants through various equipments, be it power plants or agriculture and so on. According to the IEA statistics, the thermal power plants consume large portion of these fossil fuels, which is about 68% of the world electricity produced by the burning fossil fuels. And the recent developments in the atmospheric change pose great challenges to the thermal plants such as increase in energy efficiency, reduction in pollutant emissions including SOX, NOx, carbon and so on. India has over 230,000 megawatt installed capacity out of which almost 70% is the thermal power plant. And the demand for electricity is dramatically increasing and by the coming 2020, we are going to double our capacity of electricity which is being available in the country. 
It has also made a commitment to reduce its greenhouse gases by about 20 to 25 percent by 2020, keeping 2005 as the base level. And this does not include agriculture, it's basically from both power plants and auto plants. So as committed, in order to manage the overall energy growth and at the same time to bring in clean environment, India intends to increase the fuel efficiency standards of its power plants, adopt building energy codes, increase forest cover to absorb 10% of the annual emissions, increase the fraction of electricity derived from renewable which is currently at about 8% and by 2020 likely to go to something like 21%. The key challenges facing India's power sector include an urgent need to increase energy and electricity availability for human and infrastructure development, increasing energy security, local environment protection and pollution control, and the control of greenhouse gases emissions including particularly the carbon dioxide. BHL, one of the major power plant equipment producers in the country, has always been sensitized by the needs of the country and needs of the globe and has been continuously investing in its research and development programs to ensure that we bring in the best of the technologies which addresses the environmental impacts of today. More than 400 patents and copyrights have been filed over the last year, almost one patent every day. And it is as the highest R&D spend in the corporate today in the country. It is around 1,250 crores during last year. And major of these projects have been on clean coal technologies and addressing the next generation of power plant equipments starting from supercritical, ultra supercritical, advanced ultra supercritical, IGCC, CFPC, biomass co firing and oxy fuel combustion. I am glad to say the first uh, uh, supercritical boiler at bar was commissioned two days back. It touched 660 megawatt and we are sure that more of such supercritical boilers would help us to increase the efficiency of thermal power plants in the country. India is also working on the first 800 megawatt advanced ultra supercritical as part of its national mission where BHEL, NTPC, the National Thermal Power Corporation and IGCAR, the Indra Gandhi Atomic Research Center are working to develop the first advanced ultra supercritical boiler with 300 bar pressure and 720 degrees centigrade of steam. Several forms of fluid spent technology are well established within the country and larger sizes are also being planned, including the ones through CFPC boilers. We have totally shifted from the subcritical to supercritical units, and present day boilers have much high efficiencies with reduced fuel consumption and emissions. I am happy that I was one of the former uh, guides in developing this project along with Trexter. Mr. Jawahar, when he came out with the proposal, it was something which was needed for the country, it was needed to create the awareness in the society, it was needed to bring together all the power plant equipment manufacturers, the power producers, the various uh, industries as well as the institutions together. And this MOU was signed for development of a cluster of clean coal technologies for Indian coals. I am very happy that this could take off in the right way. It also helped us to visit some of the plants in and around Europe. And we thank IEA for giving us all the support and inputs which helped us to work more closely and we are now developing a, a demonstration plant on biomass firing as well as oxy fuel combustion. Assessments of Indian coal, clean coal technology choices suggest that in order to address the environment today, one single technology is not going to be the solution. You need to have an umbrella of technologies addressing clean coal technologies. 
It could be CMBC in some cases, IGCC in some cases, advanced ultra supercritical in some cases, and so on. But then the challenge remains that depending on the situation, depending on the type of coal fuel, we need to find solutions which would really address in terms of reduction in fuel consumption, reduction in emissions, and capturing of the carbon in the system. The commercial supercritical combustion technology is the best option for India in a short term or medium term range. But as we go on, we need to look at oxy-fuel combustion for facilitating capture of carbon dioxide, which is under development at BHL today, with significant potential for cost-effective reduction of CO2 and other emissions. Commercial links have already been established with major Indian players, developers and manufacturers of the power generation equipment, as well as with international technologies such as Alstom. And it is important to engage in a very in-depth analysis of technological issues and rigid technological choices for a long term, so that the strategic plans allow us to appropriately develop the needs and address the markets which India is forecasting in the future. I think towards this, this conference is one platform which has brought together, I could see a lot of experience and young fresh blood together at this conference. I'm sure the deliberations of these two days would definitely throw upon the direction in which we will have to move. And with eminent guides such as John Topper and also the policy maker from Belgium, Dr. Merion, and other international speakers who are here to present their experiences would give us the insight which should help us to address the right type of technology or bring a choice of technology for the country which would meet the needs, which would also bring in more efficient power generating equipments as well as those equipments where we have the minimum emissions, especially capture of the carbon and carbon dioxide. I wish this seminar all success. The deliberations which you will be carrying back should help you to implement them in your own areas of work and should guide us to take India to a clean India. I am happy to inaugurate this seminar on carbon free clean coal technology as well as carbon capture and storage technologies. And I am sure the two days should bring very fruitful learnings to all of you. Thank you very much and for the patient. Distinguished dignitaries, honored of the dais, our special guests from Europe and India, senior officials from BHL, senior officials from power plants across India, members from industrial associations, academia community, members from electronics, media and press, ladies and gentlemen. As the inaugural session draws to a close, on behalf of Trexten, it is my present duty to propose this vote of thanks. This conference on clean coal and carbon capture and storage technologies is an important convergence event of a unique project developing CCT and CCS technologies sponsored by the European Union, implemented in partnership with Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Trichy. We immensely thank our sponsor, the European Union, for providing this great opportunity for implementing this prestigious project for the benefit of the thermal power players and for our society. We are very grateful to have with us our chief guest, Executive Director BHL Prichy Sri Avi Krishnan, who is a charismatic leader not only for BHL team, but for many of us in Prichy and outside. He has always been a great enabler for TrekStep and has provided unstinted support in many of our projects, particularly in this project under his leadership and advice we were able to effectively implement the project successfully. We thank you, sir, for taking time off from your busy schedule to be with us today for the inauguration of the conference and for delivering a very encouraging inaugural address. Thank you, sir. We are fortunate to have a, with us Dr. Marion White, Policy Officer, European Commission, Directory General for Energy Belgium. Our most sincere thanks to you, ma'am, for your continuous support for this project. We thank you, ma'am, for your gracious presence and 
despite your pressing uh, schedules and I also thank for the motivating special address. We are very grateful to have with us our special guest Dr. Topper, CEO, uh, IEA Cool Research Limited and IEA Environmental Projects Limited. Our, sin our sincere thanks for your continuous support for this project. We thank you sir for taking time off from your busy schedule to be with us today and for delivering this encouraging address. My vote of thanks would indeed be incomplete if I did not thank my uh, Executive Director, Mr. RFP Jabaha. We thank you, sir, for your presence and for the motivating address. I sincerely thank the eminent speakers of this conference, Professor Klaus Heng, Professor Emeritus from University of Stuttgart, Germany, Professor Earl Epper, Director of Institute for Energy Systems and Technology, University of Darmstadt, Germany, Mr. R. Padmanabhan uh, from Pooza Power Systems India, Mr. Luca Mancusa, Process Director from Foster and Leader Italy, Dr. Prachi Singh, Project Officer from IDA Greenhouse Gas UK, Dr. Dobrin Topro, uh, Deputy Head of Gasification Department of Tyson Group of Germany, Dr. Shannon Sen, Professor, Department of Civil and Engineering from University of North Carolina, uh, Charlotte, USA. Mr. John Williams from British Geological Survey, thank you all. My vote of thanks would definitely be deficient if I do not thank our wonderful project partner, the PHM Ritchie. The senior management team has been involved in the implementation of every activity of this project. We thank the entire team of PHM for the continued support for the project. My most sincere thanks for the members of the electronic media and press who have always honored us with your presence and coverage. We thank you, sirs, for being here today and for the continued support of our organization. I thank all the enthusiastic senior participants present here from all the VHL units, from various major power plants across India, academia members, and I'm sure these two days will provide your valuable knowledge sharing experience. I, uh, I also take the opportunity to thank my fellow, fellow colleagues at Rexton whose efforts have ensured that this event is a grand success and their contribution shall prove invaluable and successful organization of this conference. Thank you all. I also uh, thank the staff members of Hotel Sangam Chuchi for the wonderful hospitality. As I would not, take, uh, would not like to take much of your time on behalf of Trekstep, I thank all the dignitaries and invitees for taking time off and being with us today. The uh, session which is post lunch. And I request, and it's a request to all participants to kindly keep their cell phones in silent mode. Now we have a great beginning to our conference with two very enlightening uh, keynote presentations from Dr. John Topper and Dr. Marion White. I think I need request Dr. John Topper to thank you to the presentation first. Thank you very much. Well, after the uh, inauguration session, the real business begins now. And I'm going to try and give you something of an overview of uh, where we think uh, coal, coal is in terms of uh, in the world, in a bit more detail than I spoke earlier, where coal pipe power is and where it's going. And I know that that teams up very well with uh, what's happening here in India. And I'm going to talk a little bit also uh, towards the end about um, carbon capture and storage, although we've got several more detailed presentations on that to come from other speakers. Let me just start by saying that, uh, as you've all heard about 50 times already, I'm from the IA King Coal Centre in London, um, it, which is an organisation which uh, studies, does desktop, desktop studies of coal and coal related issues uh, around the world. Um, we do webinars, we do a lot, a lot of dissemination activity, workshops, and some conferences as well. What you're looking at on that slide is the membership, the people that pay money to influence what we actually do. And as I said before, you can see BHEL's logos on there. 
So I'm very happy to be here supporting this event uh, because of that membership and nothing else. Um, what I want to, uh, to talk about, so these four items really, um, coal supply and demand to 2035, um, that's going to be based on the IEA's World Energy Outlook, um, actually the end of last year, uh, there is another edition out right now, but it, the, the slide pack is not available, so we're still using last year's, it makes no difference to the messages that need to emerge. Um, a little bit about examples of best practice today, coal fired power, um, an efficient clean power tomorrow, with a question mark, which we'll talk about when we get there, and, uh, and uh, say, a brief overview of the status of carbon capture. There's going to be a much more detailed uh, overview of the general status of carbon capture by Dr. Prachi Singh uh, tomorrow. So, World Energy Outlook is the signature publication of the IEA. Um, Notice the four views expressed in mine, that's because I don't always stick to the party line. Um, and, uh, and really looking at where the supply and demand is. What the IA does, I want to make this clear to everybody, uh, is that it does scenarios. It doesn't pre predict what's going to happen. It says if you assume this or if you assume that, this could be the consequence. And the central scenario, the one in the middle, is what they call the new policy scenario, and I'm going to talk about a few things that arise from that. Uh, I said before when I was speaking that, that in the last 10 years, coal had actually, um, in, in terms of incremental energy demand, coal had done as much as renewables, oil, and natural gas together, and that's what this 